Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. And I'm Tiffany, liquid enthusiast. And welcome to episode 16 of Beer Nuts the Podcast Link Up Series. We have had a phenomenal series three of Link Up. Now this is week five. So the first thing, it's always fun to try and remember everyone yes. in order. So you should have seen the Brasserie Generale episode, the Fine Balance, Bellwoods, and Lost Craft. And now we are staying in Toronto. Three in a row from Toronto. I know. Represent. That's pretty cool. See? Yeah. Toronto knows. Toronto knows what's up. It's not surprising being, it's arguably, I don't know if this is fact, this is it the most multicultural city in the world, I've heard. It's one of the top, no? If not the most. Yeah. You're not like completely wrong. I know that was like a thing we were all happy about when we were younger. Okay. Like, it was like in school, they were like, we're at mixed salad. It's like melting pot and <laughs> salad. salad. And we were like the salad. Really? Because everyone got to be themselves. Where in America, you're a melting pot, so you melt into one culture. That's fascinating. Canada. A mixed yeah. salad. Beautiful place. I like yeah. that analogy, though. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's my teacher's. It's not really me, but yeah. I like that. Thank you. One well, then. Okay, well, Toronto School Bros. Shout <laughs> to you. So uh, this week, guys, yes, we're staying in Toronto. Uh, this brewery has been on the podcast a couple of times. I am uh, personally a big, big, big fan. Huge fan. I, I feel like th- these guys are the like lords of innovation in beer. I don't really know another brewery that just are willing to sort of do anything. I'm obviously making a fire, but I'm just willing to try anything, and yeah. I, I really value that. Super um, creative. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. the creativity. I like the fact they're willing to try it, and they've actually delivered a style to link up this series that we haven't had at all in any of the... I know, uh, when I saw that, I was like, ooh, hello. I know, right? right? Yeah. And it's a style that's sort of relatively new to the beer scene, so I think this is a, a great way to uh, to kick it off. So, guys, please welcome Matt and Nolan from Rorschach Brewery in Toronto. <laughs> Hello. 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 Nice Welcome, to have you. Nice to have you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Always a pleasure. Uh, genuinely excited to have you guys are part of Link Up. Thank you again for you know being willing and being down for the cause. And I know it's in your DNA as a company to you know really give back to the community that supports you. So uh, it's no surprise, but it's very valued. So thank you both again. Um, Fun fact for everybody, you guys also gave us some really fantastic ideas when we had a chat a few months back that we've executed on now. So we you know, expect to see some link up coasters around some uh, our participating breweries and some other venues. And that was an idea that uh, shouts to Nolan for that one came through with, with that. gems. Part bro. of our marketing team. Thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Nolan. Well, appreciate that. Board member. <laughs> Board member. Yeah, love it, love it. <laughs> So uh, we're super stoked for this one. So this is the glorious beer that uh, Rorschach has contributed. There, there it is. Contributed to Link Up for Series 3. It is a cold IPA. Um, fellas, first of all, we're, I mean, we're going to crack the beer, but tell us, yeah, tell us why this style. Tell us uh, what it is for people who might be unfamiliar with a, uh, a cold IPA. And let's get nerdy for a bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh so we we kind of decided to go with the cold IPA once we uh, when we first kind of learned about the style it sounded it sounded something it sounded interesting and um, you know like you mentioned before we we like to try some some different things we like to kind of innovate a bit so um, you know we, we we one of our more popular beers here is uh, the super dry rice lager we've been brewing with rice for a while also the ochata rice lager so we thought oh kind of kind of like a lager base um you know treated like an ale sounds like a cool combo so that's basically what what it is uh cold ipa might suggest kind of like india pale lager um it's similar to that um it's also kind of similar to a west coast ipa um but the kind of basics of it is that it's um kind of like a rice lager base so pilsner malt and either rice or corn uh depending on brewery preference Okay. Um, it's fermented with lager yeast, uh, but it's fermented at ale temperatures. So it's fermented usually around 20 degrees Celsius instead of instead of you know, 12 to 14. Um, so the the idea is that it gives a still that crisp nature of the body from the lager yeast and the texture, but still some you know fruity esters from a warmer fermentation and a quicker fermentation. Um, and then it's it's treated on the hop side. Um, you know, in the kettle and in, in the dry hop, similar to a West Coast IPA. So a little bit more bitter um, and also, uh, 
you know, kind of more of that citrusy piney kind of character. So uh, what we did, we, yeah, we used the Pilsner malt, uh, flaked rice, 7%. Uh, we hopped it with Sim- uh, Simcoe and Centennial. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit more bitter than most of our normal IPAs. It's a little bit drier, a little bit less body, um, and a little more towards that dank piney kind of kind of thing. So, okay. Yeah. And that's from the hops mostly. I know Simcoe is known to be kind of dank and Centennial is like old school sea hop. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. a, that contributes to that. Okay. And the, the, those hops were selected intentionally to kind of bring that West Coast, like you said, the piney, dankness, citrusy type of stuff out a bit more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we um, you know we actually haven't brewed a, a, a proper West Coast IP at the brewery, but before really? uh, when we were doing pilot batches, before we had opened up the brewery, that was kind of one of the beers that we uh, we thought was going to be one of our flagships, and then you know we, we, we came on to, to doing the, the hazy stuff, and that was just starting to take off, and uh, you know we just we really loved that, and we hadn't kind of looked back. Um, but that combo, the Simcoe and the Centennial, was kind of the main combo in that. Uh, West Coast IPA that, that we had piloted, which we will bring back at some point, but <laughs> I'm not sure when. There's an opportunity right there, bro. Yeah. I feel like West Coast are kind of making a uh, bit of a comeback too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Which is interesting. And with good reason. Yeah, right? I feel like it's just like the pushback from, the, not pushback, pendulum swinging from the kind of the haze and people just wanting a bit of a change. Um, yeah. There, there yeah. Beautiful. Um, do you guys have the beer there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get it in us, God damn it. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Lex. Cheers. Okay, great nose. Nice and juicy nose. Oh, nice. It's such a fascinating style. It's all, it's almost like it's so hard to kind of play. You're so everything that you described it on, on the money right there. I feel like, yeah, slightly less, but it's still kind of like got a nice little crispness, but there's like a creamy texture to it as well that's not as intense as your the haze, but... Um, it's still there. Definitely getting that higher bitterness yeah. through there, which works really well. Yeah, my mm. brain is kind of flipping back and forth between like <laughs> lager and IPA. It's like, oh, it's crispy and a little bitter, but then it's smooth and it's has so like smooth. some fruitiness to it. Yeah. I don't think I've had a cold IPA before. No? We know, had um, so. uh, awesome. Matron's one in Prince Edward County, but that was like a while ago. Oh, and made to take a sip of yours then. Probably, but not yeah. focused on that. It, yeah. I feel like there isn't even that many in Ontario. I mean, even in Quebec, I can't even, I can think of one or two, maybe. This is cool. I know I like this even for summer, I'm thinking as well. Like, mm. because it's like fresher mm. in a way, do you know what I mean? But it feels like, it's like you're drinking an IPA, but it's lighter, like what you should be drinking in the summer or something like that. It's really hot. I don't know, this is like the vibe that I'm getting. Like, I would definitely drink this in the park next door. Yeah. 7% I should probably drink too. <laughs> but, um, but it gives that vibe. I love the mouthfeel on It's very nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. Thank you. And this can is just yeah. so nice. When I saw it today, because we got them today, when it when I like walked into the kitchen, I saw them on the counter, I was like, whoa, what's that? And then yeah. I was like, oh, it's our beer. <laughs> I, hadn't seen, I hadn't seen the, the artwork. Which is part of the fun. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's so pretty. Um, I wanted to definitely ask about the artwork. Uh, we've said this every episode, but basically some of the, the funnest part of this whole thing for us is, um, you know, I think you guys mentioned that you were considering doing this, but we didn't have any further conversations about it. So, this, you know, the first time we saw it was when we see it on social. Yeah. And to us, that's like, oh, like, oh shit, like, this is dope. Wow, this is what style they came with. And like, this is about the beer. So like, we're learning about it like any other consumer. And there's something kind of cool about that because we don't interfere with this. And then we're looking at the, um, the, the artwork and we're like, all right, what does this, you know, what, what is the suggest? Like, obviously there's always like, what's the word? Some, like, like um, there's meaning behind all the small yeah. things in it every single time for us we've seen. So I don't know, do you guys want to speak through the artwork, um, you know, the, the thought yeah. behind all of that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, with the can, you know, we, we kind of generally stick to our uh, kind of border aesthetic and the, the foil color combo with a uh, contrast kind of with a, with, a, with a single color. Um, but yeah, we were on the color side, we were trying to obviously match up with, with your guys' logo on mm-hmm. that. But I think the gold um, made it kind of pop a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 
<laughs> with the with the puzzle piece, I, I think it was uh, it was really just something you know like uh, I, I mean I saw on, on your guys' website you have some kind of icons with the, with the puzzle piece as well, but it, it's just you know I think everyone's part of part of the puzzle. We want to kind of I mean part of Lake Up is, is, is connecting people um, as well. So I mean I think that's part of it. Uh, but just building a you know kind of a mosaic of um, of people in the in the, in the community and and, and uh, bringing people together. So I think that was kind of the idea of the puzzle piece. We wanted to go with something kind of simple and something that you know you could see and it wasn't a huge amount like of behind it other than just kind of more you know it's it's about connecting people and kind of building a bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and and that's the idea behind the behind the puzzle piece. That's I love awesome. that. That's so cool. The hands and the hop. So there's on the side of the can for the audio listeners, there's like sort of two hands, one with the palm up and one with the palm down. And in between, there's a, uh, a hop. Um, that's specific to this. Is that something that you've used before? Or this is for this uh, label as well. Uh, that's our side icon. Like, our, our hoppy ears, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, at least it's a hoppy beer. I never noticed this before. Oh, yeah. so like each dial has like a... Oh, that's so cool. Exactly, yeah. On the lagers, there's like a little stein in between the hands. Uh, oh. On some of our chocolate milk stouts, there's a little... I think it's a chocolate bar. Um, I don't like know, the decadent. inspired sours. is like a, a little uh, tiki head. So cool. That's dope. That's a sick detail. I'm going to go look in the me, fridge now and yeah, look same. at them. Yeah. That's what I was like. Is she linking up the hop in between her hands? Yeah, there's like different like... people, two people coming together with like, you know, hops being the thing that's bringing them together. Like, see, but this is the fun of it, right? Because yeah. like, I didn't, I don't know why. I feel like maybe like I'm looking at the beer labels, but I'm like staring at them, to be honest, like all the time. So I'm sure sometimes there's a bunch of like cool details like that that escape uh, some folks so like some I little thought, easter egg yeah. yeah totally an easter egg i mean but yeah. it's but it's a, a practical easter egg yeah um that also seems to like looking at it immediately i was like oh that's a part of it but then that's why i wanted to ask i was like what's well, off to the side so maybe yeah is. um yeah. that's cool but people can ascribe meaning to it as well which i in my head i do yeah um which is great and i thank you again for putting the uh What's it called? QR code. QR code on the side, so people can uh, learn about it, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is really key. That's something that we did not do last series, so love to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Who guys. Who does the artwork? Sorry, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we there's a local designer here nice. who, who kind of she um, she put together the the structure of it. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the smaller edits get done by our, our label company, but um, okay. But yeah, the kind of the, the bigger um, kind of structure was built up by by her. Her name's Michaela. She's killing it. She, yeah. she is yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. Did she, is she the one who came up with the puzzle piece? Or was, did you guys deliver, say, hey, like, do something with the piece? Or? Uh, that, that was on our end. That was, yeah, that was mm-hmm. on our end, the puzzle piece. But, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's, uh, you know, usually we, we discuss uh, here internally with the, you know, amongst the staff about, you know, who's coming up and, and kind of what we, I'll think about it and, and then we kind of go with go with something that hopefully represents the beer the best way. Awesome. Sick. Here yeah. for it. Love it. This is brilliant, guys. Um, great execution. Love it. And I hope this sort of helps the folks, you know, learn about, uh, I mean, I hope it was great for you guys as well to sort of test out a new style and it's, you know, something new for a bunch of drinkers, um, you know, whether they're already customers of yours or new customers now that uh, are discovering a new style and just, you know, learning more about beer and keeping that conversation going so yeah thank you again this is this is amazing very cool yeah um yeah you guys were at on our original list so when we first started link up um we were talking you know we do, knew we were doing these collaborations and we we're all talking and obviously i, I imagine because i had been doing this longest uh i had a you know reasonable list of people in the industry that i knew that i thought would be down for the cause and to get involved you guys were absolutely on the first few of that list that i thought of immediately because you have done work in the space in the past you know you clearly really care about the community around you uh the east end of toronto which is like a real booming area right now um first question would be you know why specifically you know what unless i bullied you into it but you know (laughs) why specifically uh did you guys decide to get involved and and, you know join link up for this uh, series of blue beer um well you know i i would say that um craft beer 
is kind of produced and consumed uh, for everybody. Um, there's a lot more diversity in the, the craft beer scene, uh, at least on the consumer side right now. Um, you know, not to say that our beers contribute to that or anything, but an example would be uh, some of our sours, our, our smoothie sour is a good one. Um, so many people love that beer that aren't traditional beer drinkers. Um, so it's really cool to see, uh, you know, kind of a, a more diverse crowd uh, get excited about craft beer, uh, even though they don't really like beer. Uh, it's always kind of fun for us, like sometimes we'll be sampling it and someone will say, oh, I, I don't like beer, that's okay. Or like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to drink it for this reason. They're like, I'll just try a little bit, you'll like it. And they try and they go, whoa, like, where can I get more of this? Um, so that's kind of a, a cool way that, uh, you know, some of our beers appeal to, to more people that um, you wouldn't think it appeals to. So yeah, craft beer is pretty diverse on the consumer side, um, but our industry is definitely lacking a bit more of that uh, diversity behind the scenes. Um, so, you know, Link Up is an amazing initiative that's tackling that head on by connecting uh, job opportunities, careers in the, the craft beer industry with uh, BIPOC communities. So, um, you know, absolutely, we wanted to get involved in that and, and uh, you know, try and be involved in addressing uh, those issues and making our industry a, a more diverse one because uh, diversity results in innovation and, uh, you know, makes it available to more people. So, yeah, of course. Love it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. The innovation yeah. part, I think, is super key, too. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that we went to Merit like a few weeks ago, a couple weeks back. And like based on their menu, it was like obvious that their team was diverse even because it was like a Jamaican sour, some Jamaican sour they had. They had like a jerk pork sausage. They, it would be weird if they weren't even Jamaican because of how horrible. Jamaican the menu was. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, yeah, exactly that. Innovation, right? It's just like you have more minds, more people in the room who might be like, oh, here's like some ingredient my grandma always used or my mom uses in something or whatever that can end up bringing yeah bringing in something creative especially for you know like your team is like super creative as it so um yeah, I, yeah that, i that's one thing 100 percent that you nailed on the head and then the other thing which is why we wanted to really attack the workforce or say really focus on the workforce aspect is that we also felt that if we did increase the diversity in the workforce that would trickle down to tap rooms as well which is another goal so it's like trying to take it from a different angle, yeah. really, yeah. Um, and I remember, Nolan, you actually reached out to Link Up initially nice. to put jobs on the job board. So Sweet. that was a proactive thing. And I was like, well, this is great. We were already talking. I was like, yo, I've known Maddie for years. So I'm like, hey, if you guys are interested, we'd love to have you because I hadn't approached you about it yet. But the fact that you already sought out the, the program and saw the opportunity to put the, the ads on the job board are like, this is money, this yeah. is perfect. Um, and it didn't surprise yeah, me at all. Yeah. The, I mentioned yeah, we're always looking to, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please, please, please. Uh, yeah, we're always looking to um, make Rorschach a more inclusive and diverse space wherever we can. So um, yeah, I noticed Link Up, uh, a number of breweries that we follow working with you guys. So um, when it came time that we were looking to hire for some positions, you were uh, at the front of our minds for sure. Awesome. I love that. And that's you know, something that's a, a newer thing that we're really trying to sort of get that out there, both on this, this two challenges, I guess, for us to, to get it out to the, to the brewery world, to be like, hey, you know, you put it up on Indeed, you put it there, hey, reach out to us and, and we'll, we'll put it on our job board too and then do these job post roundups. And then alternatively, um, we need to tap into the community, which is our next big challenge on our side and that we're, that we're working on now. Um, the one thing, the first thing I saw from you guys, I mentioned this off air when we were chatting, was uh, you did a, one of your decadents, the chocolate milk sour, which is sour, um, stout, 7% milk stout. Um, phenomenal, you did a collab with Ed and Miyoshi, who uh, some folks in you know Instagrammers in the beer scene who are very passionate about uh, all things diversity. Um, and you did a pineapple rum cake 
a version of it, which I thought was super cool because it was basically kind of exactly what Tiff said. It was based on I, I, I do I don't remember which one of them, but their family's recipe, something that they would typically eat. I've had with Jamaican rum cake before, but yeah. I guess they have a pineapple version. Yeah, uh, I don't recall the culture specifically, but the fact that you know you guys connected with them and then decided to make that beer, and you know you had this base, and you just keep redoing different things in this 7% milk stout base that we did a, a collab on uh, yeah. last year, which was fire. Um, I love that. It was love so, so one. good. Do you know what? Yes. Pe- other people did some other things afterwards. I don't know if you've seen it, but other people did them. Like, jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically. Shouts to them. Um, it was cool. It was good to see. But yeah, I thought that was really cool that you guys did that. And it was just taking something from, you know, a, a Caribbean culture that you worked with people from that culture to do that and to you know, showcase it, the the diversity of just taste profiles mm-hmm. if anything else I don't recall if, I don't know if you guys want to speak to how that beer came about and you know if there was any other part to it that maybe I'm missing or if it was just like a fun collab to you know, do something different yeah no for sure we um, uh, we did a couple collabs actually with Ed, Ed and Maoshi um, hmm. actually ended up being three at this at this point there was the, the uh, pineapple rum Decadence. There was the Black is Beautiful, which I think might have been the original collab that we did with them, ah, okay. um, which was the Coconut Cakes, um, which was uh, Mayoshi's, um, I, I forget if it was her mother's recipe or grandmother's recipe, um, but for the Coconut Cakes, um, which uh, which we're actually talking about brewing again uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the fall time yes. um, with them. Um, but that one, that one turned out amazing. She made them for us um, just to kind of taste and get a sense of the flavor oh, so cute. <laughs> yeah it was uh it was That's it was cute. awesome she, yeah she made us a i think like a dozen or so nice. um so I, I tried one and i put i put the rest in the fridge we wanted to take some pictures with it after the beer was ready mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh yeah That's funny story awesome. jared my uh, our other brewer here he, he ate all of them except for one because they were so good <laughs> <laughs> Left one, so we got a picture. Oh my gosh, that's actually <laughs> hilarious. Because <laughs> screw your photo. Like, uh, taste buds. That's hilarious. Taste buds over yeah, photography. Yeah, taste buds over photography. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. So it started with Black is Beautiful. That's sick. Okay, and yeah. it just kept that relationship moving. And yeah, moving. yeah. And we uh, we did a we did a collab uh, for actually for Ed's uh, birthday, uh, his forty fifth birthday, um, and it was a birthday cake version of the. Level of benevolence, imperial stout, which uh, uh, that one turned out really nice. Um, it tasted exactly like birthday cake. Nice, <laughs> so good. sick. Um, I love that. Yeah, no, it was it was fun. It's, it's fun working with them. It's fun kind of bringing more diverse ideas into into our kind of brewing kind of ideas and philosophies of what ingredients might work and what kind of ideas there are, there are out there because, um, like you said to before about kind of bringing kind of more diverse ideas and, and stuff into the community like mm-hmm. or into the bur- onto, into the beer side specifically um like uh on the bur- you know like it, it there's 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 some kind of approaches in, on, on brewing that you know is you know this is what we do and and this is kind of like the traditional way of doing things and, and stuff and you know I, we've always been you know tradition is great but you know tradition for who you know and, mm-hmm. and so you know we we want to kind of bring different ideas in and do different tastes because we want to broaden kind of our offering and and kind of the people that, that we um kind of bring into the community and, and we you know we think like nolan mentioned about you know if there's someone who doesn't like beer and they try you know our beer or i think we talked about this on the last podcast when we did the mountain dew seltzer that we, that we were tasting yes. you know, someone you know didn't um, want to taste beer, but they taste seltzer, and then they come in and they say, "Oh, that was good. Well, let me try one of your smoothie sours. Let me try one of your sours." It just brings more people into the into the beer world, into the industry, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I I think you know, that's the goal here. That's what that's what our goal is. You know, to to, to have a lot of diverse ideas, a lot of diverse products, and you know, and try to try to highlight that. So yeah, um, that 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 feeds into the kind of collabs that we've been doing with with Enemy Ocean and some other collabs. And, yeah, you know, a lot of our beers too um, are kind of. Matt usually describes it as being, uh, uh, you know, flavors that are reminiscent or nostalgic. Um, a lot of desserts and our our stout bases um, are kind of like based on desserts that 
uh, we've had throughout our lives. So when you drink it, it's, it's kind of a, a point of nostalgia mm -hmm. and takes you back a little bit. Um, so yeah, being able to include some of those flavors and, and memories and ideas from not just our own backgrounds, but backgrounds from other people too and other cultures um, kind of adds to opening up our beers to yeah. a wider crowd and, and uh, hits home for them too. Yeah, I love that so much because I wasn't even thinking about that. I was actually looking for my phone because I want to write that down for a social post. But mm. like, and one great way to attract not only diverse, um, I'm going to check after. Yes, yeah, so we'll we'll it. It. be around. Um, not one, not only are you attracting, so it's two really cool things you said, you, the collaborations actually help you to attract diverse, a diverse customer base. Mm. So that's actually a strategic move. Like if we're talking strategically, you want to bring people in of diverse. If you partner with somebody who is, say you've partnered with a Jamaican food blogger or like Instagram or something like that, that have a certain base, if they want to support that person with this cool collab, they're going to go drink that beer one and then that's going to open them up to the craft beer world or if somebody even stumbles upon it but if i saw something and it said jamaican rum cake stout or something like that i'm going to pick it up because i'm gonna be like oh jamaican rum cake what are you talking about like yeah. i'm going to want to see it so it's like it gets it from two cool angles like visibility but also like you create that yeah it's like that something that immediately signals to you like oh this is something that's either from my culture or culture i'm familiar with let me test it out which i think is super cool so I feel like people could be strategic in either partnerships or things like that to kind of attract a new base. Um, I'm sad I miss all three of these beers, but I live in Ontario soon, so I'm not, it's not yeah. going to be like this anymore. Um, so <laughs> very cool, very very cool. I and I wanted it. to ask about the Black is Beautiful because it's cool that you did that too, because then it seems like one, I'd be curious to know like why you wanted to do Black is Beautiful, and then two, just in general, how does that fall into like the ethos of you know, Rorschach in general, like participating in this type of, these types of initiatives. Say. Do you want to answer that one, Matt? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, so yeah, yeah, like, uh, uh, like you mentioned, the, the, or we were saying the Black's Beautiful Clap that, uh, that we did was, was in that initial kind of wave of the, uh, of the, the, the movement that was, um, started by Weather Souls um, after kind of a lot of you know the instances of police brutality, but you know especially after the George Floyd um, murder, um, and you know we just you know you can't can't help but but see all all of that and you know not want to do something, and you know we're not always in a position where we can you know do as much as as we like or we think or we don't know what the best approach is but when we saw that we we're like that's definitely something that that is, is what we can do and and so you know we, and we wanted to do it and you know ideally in collaboration um with someone from the community as well um because you know it, it, it did we wanted to have some some substance to it and and so i i think that's you know that was i I thought it was a nice kind of combination of the, the coconut cakes um, kind of flavor there as well, um, you know, and, and trying to trying to create something that, that you know, resonated, um, you know, for everyone, but, you know, especially, um, you know, for for a more diverse audience and, and you know, the, the donations that uh, um, we made for that one, I believe, was to Black Women in Motion, um, which is a great Toronto organization here. Um, so, you know, it was uh, it was amazing to be a part of it, and uh, and yeah, no, it's uh, you know I, I I think that we're always kind of looking to do to to more of those collaborations, um, and and be able to kind of use what we do well on the on the beer side and our creativity um, in collaboration with other other people, and and to support organizations that that we think are doing great work for the community. Awesome, no, I love that. Were there other things like this that you guys had done in the past as well? So obviously the Black is Beautiful, the work with Ed and Yoshi. Um, it feels like this is all like, a, this is a consistent thing for the brewery, the, the, the vibe I'm getting. Um, yeah, is there other things that you guys have done or at least if not done, like that you were looking to do? 
Yeah, um, last summer there was another uh, collaboration beer we did uh, called Celebrating Sisters in collaboration with the Indigenous Brew Crew. Um, oh, nice. We'd actually, yeah, yeah, we had just wrapped up a homebrew competition uh, that we ran um, in partnership with uh, Mark Solomon, uh, who is a member of the Indigenous Brew Crew. Um, and we had donated, uh, you know, all of the proceeds from the competition um, to the Thunder Woman Healing Lodge Society. Um, and then shortly after that competition, uh, Mark reached out to us and, and asked if we'd want to be a part of that uh, collaboration that they were planning. Um, so we said, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, yeah. So celebrating sisters was, it, I think that was last summer. It was, uh, maple and rose hip sour, Ooh. I think. Hey, oh, and right. blueberry. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Sweet. Yeah. Literally. I just looked up, I just, yeah, literally, yeah. I was just yeah. writing down the indigenous beer, uh, brew crew. You said, so I'm going to check that out. Um, I know I've heard of Mark. I think I've spoken to him on yeah. Twitter before. He's pretty active on Twitter. Nice. I uh, heard great things about what they're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's just in your blood, basically. It's what you guys are doing, which is very cool. Like, it's awesome that it's, like, baked into, yeah, the ethos, like, kind of, like, baked into your business, which is, yeah. yeah, very cool. One of the challenges that we've been speaking to breweries about here, and this is what, and the reason we bring this up is it comes up, you know, off air all the time, you know, we're talking to breweries and that's how this kind of started. People, breweries have been asking us for years, like, you know, how do we attract a more diverse talent pool? Not even just the drinkers, like, how do we get more, you know, how do we attract people from different backgrounds that aren't just typically white dudes to work and to want to apply for breweries? I mean, obviously the most passive thing is that you put a job ad out and then you let people come to you who see the job ad. Um, you know, maybe the, you know, I imagine there's a lot of challenges. Obviously, there's an awareness issue. There's a lot of communities that don't even know that it's an option. Uh, hence, people aren't like searching for brewery work, um, etc. But I'm just be curious as to your experience, you know, good or bad, um, with hiring. You know, when you put your job ads out, or you know, who people who are coming into the brewery uh, off their own back. Like, you know, what what does that look like for you guys? Has it you know, been pretty monoculture? Like, what's it what's it been? Yeah, you know, it, it, it has generally been, and, and I think you touched on it as well there, that, um, you know, whether it's kind of a, a passive thing when we put, put something up on a, on, a, on a job board, you know, maybe people, I'm sure there are a lot of people who, uh, you know, from, from diverse backgrounds that feel like maybe that's not a space that they're, that they're going to be welcome to, not specifically us, obviously, but like any, like any, any position or, you know, and, and I'm sure there's, there's, you know, like, like you see a lot of white people, obviously, I'm sure they don't think twice about something like that. And that's a hurdle that, you know, obviously we have to kind of get over. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I think part of it is, and, and something, something great um, now with, um, you know, is with Brian Allen in the States and uh, Aaron, Aaron Broadfoot here with uh, kind of, focusing on having, you know, highlighting the code of conduct for, for breweries and, and, and that kind of um, initiatives to, 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 to make um, it, the, the brewery space kind of more vocally welcome to, to, to diverse backgrounds, diverse people. Um, I think that's an important thing because, you know, maybe it's something that we would take for granted, you know, just walking into a space. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, there are a lot of people that, that question whether, you know, how welcome they might be in certain, certain spaces, yeah. um, especially on the job side of things. So, um, you know, I think I think that's something that just being vocal and active about that as well is, is important. And, you know, and what you guys are doing for sure here, I mean, it's amazing. And like like Nolan said, you know, we wanted to be part of it um, once we saw that, you know, that, that you guys were, were doing it. So, um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's, we have have seen that, and, and it's something that I think, you know, we need to work harder to to to, to kind of change the, the culture. Link up is one uh, initiative I've seen um, that is really kind of addressing the problem head on. Um, but some other examples I've kind of noticed um, is 
scholarship opportunities mm -hmm. for uh, members of BIPOC communities um, for brewing specific programs. Um, so that's kind of another way I've, I've seen uh, that some some folks in the community, the, the craft beer community are um, addressing some of these problems. That, yeah, that, uh, I think Dominion, yeah. Dominion, Dominion has, did one. Niagara, with Niagara College. Yeah, with Niagara I College. guess we can say this publicly now. So based on that, we, we sort of were revising the link up program recently with the team. And one thing we came up with, I mean, we, we offered the Cicerone um, training, training, you know, whatever levels will we'll follow people yeah. all the way to the end. Um, we've had that's the vast majority of the people who've come through our program. It's the most popular. We, you know, we had a bunch of different things. That's where everyone gravitated to. It's, it's sort of cheap and it's cheaper on our side so that means we are able to help more people the, the money goes further it's easier it's like a lower lift for people looking to get into industry maybe dabble a bit and see how they feel about it it's not too much so they can do that they get their level one like oh yeah this is really interesting and you know level two cicerone has been giving us some scholarships but speaking of that uh, scholarship Nolan, we were looking at you know how can we help and it seems like education is a great way to do it so one of the things we're looking to do either later this year or next year is to offer a similar scholarship, maybe one in Ontario, one in Quebec to the, the various schools as well to a BIPOC individual who wants to do that. Um, we've even had a BIPOC dude who was at, he's currently enrolled in the Niagara School, but he's also, we, we got his um, level two Cicero. Mm -hmm. So he'd already had level one, so we covered his level two and his exams and his uh, books and, and all that type of stuff. Whilst he's in the brew school, I'm like, man, this guy's a local. This guy's awesome. <laughs> so, like, that was, like, you know, that was really great. And I feel like, like, when he, he's going to understand the brewing industry from, you know, the whole production side plus the whole front of house side in a way that, I, you know, I would imagine isn't very common. And that speaks to his character wanting to do that. So, hopefully, these scholarships, I was glad you brought that up because it's something that we are looking to, to sort of do, um, yeah, later this year or early in next year put something out there and try and give that away maybe once a year, once every six months, whatever makes sense. Because mm -hmm. it, it seems like a, a way to impact people in a real direct way. And if you're covering their schooling and covering all of those costs, that's it's a difference between doing it and not doing it, really, um, yeah. for a lot of folks. So that means you know, we're able to cover education. And it seemed, that seems to be a good way to do it. And I think you're right. There are a lot of challenges from the breweries and, you know, organizations like ours that are need to we need to find the community and i think that's a challenge for everybody is how do we tap into it? and i think things that you guys have been doing so far with you know i would imagine and i don't know if it's like i'm not going to ask you the question as much because it's probably not a tangible answer but like the work with ed and miyoshi for example the black is beautiful and, and the the pineapple cake blah, blah blah like i would i would hope that those specific uh, executions and collaborations directly resulted in a more diverse client base, even temporarily. Like Tiff said, if you heard that there was a beer that was made after one of your Jamaican desserts that yeah. you grew up eating, then you're like, oh wow, I would go to that brewery, even if I couldn't give a shit about beer. Yeah. And I would go there either to drink it on premise or to go buy it. And yeah. then maybe you're curious and be like, oh, you got all this stuff. Hey, what's this about? Yeah. And then you look into it, you know. So I would hope that that would directly translate into some sort of. Uh, result there yeah it's but, funny because it's not tangible because you're not sitting there being that's like, the thing oh, you, yeah. <laughs> you know well, but you, like, you can't measure it it's yeah you can't measure it but i think there for sure would be this this impact this trickle down that will come from things like that and it's just yeah. a matter of doing that type of stuff how yeah. do you find them the tap room is that's a good question because like, you're in you toronto to be, yeah you're in toronto area. east end is it pretty diverse or how do how do you feel is, does that feel a bit more diverse than what the workforce looks like yeah, yeah, I think I, uh, our our tap room on. is uh, very diverse. Um, you, you know, we're a very um, queer friendly brewery, um, mm -hmm. so we definitely see a lot of uh, queer folks uh, as as customers coming on by. Um, you know, e even on the event side for private events. Um, so it, it's like you said, it's a little you know, it's kind of hard to track and and see if um, <laughs> the the demographic yeah. of our <laughs> consumers but yeah. um you know if we're seeing starting to notice some more of these like uh queer events being booked for example then like i would hope that we're we're kind of 
becoming known as as a queer space and mm -hmm. um, a, a safe space and inclusive space uh, for other communities as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's cool. That's what you want, because in the end, it's like, say, even the queer community or even just in general, the, the Toronto is made up of all these different types of people, right? It doesn't look one way. So yeah. if, if the brewery, if the tap room doesn't, is not diverse, then something weird is happening. And that's like something that people have to look at for sure. So that's good. That's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah, particularly in Toronto, you're right. Yeah, because it's just Toronto. Yeah, it's like... It'd be kind of... Uh, yeah. I was about to say like it's you're doing be... something wrong. <laughs> yeah. I know it's hard, but it's, it's, it's also just thing. like, they'll find their way to you. They if have to, anywhere. have to find... Yeah, like if anywhere, Toronto's the one where like, if it was for some reason, like just all white guys with beards, and you'd be like, okay, <laughs> so everyone else isn't finding us for some reason. Is there something we're missing, whether it's on social, whether it's something we're doing that's making it feel like this isn't for everybody. So it's cool to yeah. hear that like this space feels inclusive. It feels like a safe space. And yeah. That's awesome. And one, a couple of things we learned even, and I'm sort of saying this, telling you guys, but also the audience. Um, Bell would recently said they learned that it's all about the, the language in the job ads mm -hmm. that can appear more inclusive um, to different communities. Do you remember what specifically it was? They were saying, saying just things like, can you live 60 kegs or 60 oh, no, um, pounds. pounds or whatever. And, like, and then people were like, why am I lifting 60 pounds? What's happening? Like, what are you talking yeah, about? Other like, people immediately were like, oh, that's kegs. That's probably why they're asking that type of thing. Or the malt bags or whatever they're or, working yeah. if you're going to be in production. Like yeah. those type, you know, if you're in front of house, oh, yeah, you're probably sorry. lifting kegs. Yeah. No, no, you're right though. Yeah. Front of house is 50 liter kegs or whatever and then blah, blah, blah. So like, yeah. people might not know exactly what that, why you're asking that or what, what that's on the job ad for. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the other one was, oh shit, what was it? It was the job ads and the, in the social media feeds, just having diverse, if there's that, I think you guys don't really put people in the feed as much, but if you do put people, different hands on the beers, different faces, mm -hmm. just different tones to be like, oh, okay, different genders. So, okay, cool. Well, it's like, you know, 50, 50, yeah. me, you know, um, gender and then, um, different skin tones and stuff so everyone will see themselves in the peep in the feed and be mm -hmm. like oh like these this person r reminds me of me or my background so i feel more comfortable at this place this means it's for me yeah and the, the small really it's like a series of nuances that contribute to people feeling more comfortable being more interested in coming into the space so yeah it's uh something that we're all like going through even from outside trying to figure it out obviously we're yeah, we're like learning, adjacent learning to everything, and even understanding like, okay, why might... What are the problems Yeah, too? what are the problems? And then that's why our, our job here is like we're concepting always like, okay, how, how can breweries attract more people? How do we, how are we that bridge? But just like what are ideas even without us that people can go on and do? And mm. I'm stealing the collab idea from you all. So when you see that come up in a social post, you tag them. Of course. Of course. <laughs> when you see that come up in a social post, I'll say, as in, for example, mm. because I just love that. I just think that's a great way to attract. And I think that's something oh, that. Oh, the collab with Just like, sure. yeah, that's like an e like you say, easy lift. What I mean, like, it's a cool thing that you can do. You're always having fun collaborating, but oftentimes breweries are collaborating with other breweries. And it's like, if you have, if you want to really open up, you don't just, everybody already knows. Like, you collaborating with other breweries, people already know that other brewery likely, but it's cool to do with, like, be it creators, be it food bloggers, be it a restaurant, uh, be it any of those community things. Group. Yeah, a community group. I think that's a really cool way that might get overlooked as well. So um, that's another marketing idea, Nolan, that uh, we're going to steal from you. And uh, we'll be sure to give you credit on, on that one. Yeah. yeah. Coasters and collabs. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So thank you. <laughs> it, of course. No, I appreciate you guys. This is great. Um, was there anything else we wanted to touch on? I know we were, uh, like I was saying earlier, I could go on forever. We do 45 while I'm 45 here. 45 is pretty reasonable, right? It's not bad. Tiff that's let me get my, that's my target. Me. That's my target. My target's 30 to 45. <laughs> Sometimes we go a little over, it's fine. But Craig exactly. will, you know. We're, we're going to do another one. You know how this goes. Soon, so. You've done the pods. It'll yeah, be it five hours. Work. So we just are <laughs> trying to keep things uh, on track. I can't help myself. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. No. <laughs> was there anything else you want to, like, mention around this so do, do you think we yeah. sort of encapsulated any projects you have coming yeah anything up, coming anything. up that's maybe surrounding any sort of that maybe even even if it's not bipoc diversity even if it's lgbt or something else is there anything else uh you guys have coming up that people should know about um 
We do have that collab with uh, Ed and Miyoshi that we're going to be doing in the fall. Matt mentioned a bit Sweet. earlier. Mm -hmm. um, don't fully flesh that out yet, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be the Coconut Cakes Imperial Stout again, which I'm super looking forward to. Um, they let me know that they had kind of kept a bottle of it around and they, they just drank it recently and that it was tasting really nice. I still have a bottle in my parents' basement. So <laughs> I, I'm going to, if I can, I'm going to try and hold on to it and then we'll, we'll crack it open. At the collab. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. We... Safeguarding that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we do have a, a little something um, planned for, for pride this month. Um, Sweet. I'll, Matt is kind of the, he can probably speak to it a bit better than I can in terms of the the beer side of it. Yeah, uh, we're just uh, we we did our haterade um, uh, for the anniversary the blue blue um, power blue. drink uh, yeah. sour beer. People lost uh, their minds over that, bro. I had people begging me for like, where can I get to some? I'm like, I told them where to go. This you know, Rorschach Brewery. Go go to the website. It's probably gone, but people were excited. Yeah. It sold out very quick, but uh, we're doing a very small tap tap run for 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 the uh, main Pride weekend and, and and month and for for a little as long as it lasts. Basically, um, a, a keg of uh, of the six uh, different uh, colors um, on, on the Pride flag, but then the the, the <laughs> power drink colors. For real? Uh, so yeah, Yo, so that's uh, the, sick. The red, that's cool. Um, Yellow, yeah. orange, purple, blue, and green. That's cool. <laughs> That's all, so all, all are on tap. <laughs> That's Yo, so sick. When is that? That's uh, for the. Uh, we're starting. It's uh, the twenty second Friday, and then through the weekend until it lasts, basically. So. Oh, so isn't that all like of July or June? June, though, or June, June. Yeah. So, so today. Oh, so this Friday. This Friday. Yeah. Uh, sorry, okay, twenty. This Friday. Fourth, I guess. Yeah, this 24th. Okay, sick. So, yeah. Damn, we're gonna that's do that. so okay, that's cool. Little, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's really yeah. creative. Yeah, see, like that's that's beautiful, that's and just cool. so small little gestures like that that just you know lets everyone know that hey, man, this is for everyone. Come through. Yeah. We repping for you guys, and you know, I love it. This is awesome, man. We really appreciate you guys. I feel like uh, yeah, like Tiff said, we're already massive fans and uh, humans and the brewery and the product and. I just yeah, we're very grateful that you know you, you give us the time tonight to hang out and to to you know do what you've done with this beer and hopefully you know we teach some folks like I said about a new style which I think is also an important part of, of yeah. this as well and hopefully this is attracting a uh, you know the new audience will discover a brewery who who weren't familiar before and maybe a new style and that'll lead to a whole bunch of uh, great things so thank you both for everything thank um, you very very appreciated beer is so awesome yeah yeah so good <laughs> thank you. so good yeah, it's killer. yeah. um where can everyone... oh genuine pleasure guys for real where can everyone find rorschach online we're uh at <laughs> rorschach beer uh on uh, instagram and, and and twitter which we don't use twitter really that much anymore um but so yeah tag. we're at rorschach beer uh and then rorschachbrewing.com uh, we have our online store there as well, and uh, and you know, our tap list uh, menu for the brewery address, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Awesome. This beer is on the website then, or? Yep. Yeah, we just Sweet. put it up on the website yeah. last night. So uh, awesome. yeah, we. Okay. Yeah. So. It's, cool. uh, yeah. It may be around by the time the episode drops because it'll be about just under two weeks from when. We did we, we recorded to to when the episode will actually drop. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we just did them ahead of time, just in case there was a, a gap or anything. So I wanted it to come out nicely. But uh, yeah, if anything, yeah, people can excuse me jump on the website or or come by the the brewery and get it on tap, and potentially find it, excuse me find it in some um, specialty beer stores, uh, independent bottle shops, and maybe uh, a couple bars who may have the cakes as well. Nice. In awesome. a couple weeks. Um, let's do the thumbnail real quick. Oh yeah. You want to uh, hold up? Do you guys have the can? There we go. Of course you. Oh, god damn it! There we go. Ready? That is glorious. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up. Just stick around uh, once we wrap it up, and we'll we'll finish up uh, off air. But uh, Matt and Nolan, thank you both for uh, hanging out. This was thank a genuine you. pleasure. Everybody, oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. 
it's always uh, always awesome. You guys are the best. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell Dude. so you know when the new drops. Follow us everywhere at BA with Podcast. See, Matt's having thumbs up, mate. <laughs> Don't ignore Matthew. Uh, yeah. At BA with Podcast, but also at Link Up Beer everywhere. It is linkupbeer.org. You can apply directly if you are a BIPOC individual and you would like to apply for the program. Hit up the uh, the website has all the form on there. You'll have a lovely chat with Danielle, who is the nicest human I know, and uh, she'll figure out what you need, and then we'll take it all from there. Um, this is week five. We have week six coming up for the end of series three. Then we're back with series four in uh, the fall. We haven't locked down the exact dates yet, but we're almost wrapped up all the breweries as well. So it's uh, constantly exciting times. Uh, did I finish everything? I think you got Close it. Right. social media. Check out oh the long form audio and these drop every Wednesday 8 p.m. Eastern. The link up are sort of we're putting them out at the same time as the other episodes as well because yeah. uh, we didn't want to delay anything. Um, Matt, Nolan, thank you both again for your time. Everybody, thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers.